Hi lovelies! Today I'm going to be showing you guys my silkscreen process printing four colors from start to finish. So for this image that I'm silkscreening, I drew it digitally on Procreate and as pink, blue, yellow, and black. Before we do anything, let's have some caffeine. Okay, ready. So I drew this on Procreate and the other colors are like green, orange, brownish, purple, but those are all mixes, so I just have to print four colors. So I printed the blue first, then the pink, then the yellow, and finally the black. You should print your opaque colors first. Those are the ones that you want to add a lot of white to, which in my case is the blue. Then the next step is to find some screens that will be the right size for your images. Because I wanted to save time, I chose to put four films on two screens. This seemed like a great idea in the beginning so that I didn't have to expose and wait and wash and dry twice as much. But if you're new to silkscreen and didn't understand that, I'll explain it later and you'll see why I messed up on that part. So when you're coating with emulsion, it always should be the flat side. So not the side with the indent and the room should be dark because the goopy stuff is sensitive to light but this is just what we're working with here in this university um then of course the fire alarm had to set off thank god we don't really have to do anything about it everyone kind of ignores it so that's nice i'm gonna coat my two screens and this should be about enough you don't really need that much because it's just a thin layer on top of the yellow mesh so you let the emotion kind of fill up and touch your screen and then you bring it up in one quick but like hard move but not too hard because then you're gonna stab your screen you know what i mean and then you'll have a broken screen So you put them onto the drying rack, um, this thing is heated and it'll speed up the drying process of the emulsion which usually takes 20 minutes if you have a fan but I think this is good in 10. I did some weights, I peed. Now that we're waiting let's talk about today's sponsor. Um, I have some of my silk screens on the front page of my website actually and as an illustrator, having an online platform to showcase this is so important for school or clients. I've been using Squarespace for the past three years, long before I even made a YouTube channel, because this site is image friendly and the layout is professional. You can also connect Squarespace to your Etsy shops and social media accounts. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash purplekabocha to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And when the two screens are dry, take them out and put it on the big light box. This depends on every machine, but the instructors will tell you which buttons to press and then you'll let the top vacuum and then let the light do its magic to expose the coated screen. Then you have to wash the emulsions out and you can see how in the parts that were covered by the black on the films have not been exposed to light so they wash out therefore that part of the screen will be permeable for the ink to print through onto your paper but the parts that weren't covered when we put it under the light box have been exposed by the light so those are the parts that the ink won't go through if that makes sense and to shorten the drying time we put the wet screens back into the heated drying rack we wait about 10 minutes. You know it's printing time when we have to tie our hair up. 
Oh, I also straightened my hair the other day, and I kind of like it. It's like, it's giving me like Rachel Green vibes. So once the screen is dry, you clip it onto the table. Sometimes the setup will be different in every school, but just make sure it's secure and that I won't move. Use the duct tape to tape around the corners and edges so that the paint won't print or leak through. Since I have two images exposed, I also tape part of the other side and then just get a squeegee that's a bit bigger than your image and you're ready to mix the paint. So like I said, usually you want to print the most opaque layer first, not including the line work though. In this case, I wanted the blue to have lots of white so it looks nice and thick and creamy, so I'm printing the blue first. I added just a little bit of blue and lots of white. And back in New York City, they told us that the consistency should be like melted ice cream, so I add some water to thin it up a bit. You don't have to be super careful with this, at least not with the first color. And then after that, you could go straight to printing, or you could look like me and just stare into space and figure out what the heck is going on and run the process through in your head. Put the ink on the screen. Most people like me print at a 45 degree angle, you should use plenty of force to pull back the ink, but when you're flooding, and I used to make this mistake, don't flood too hard. Just enough to coat the mesh with the ink so the tiny holes don't dry out, but if you push it forward too heavy-handed, you're forcing more ink out through the other side than there should be. So, like, the print will just look... A lot thicker like you won't get the fine lines that your drawing has it'll just look like a thick line or something like that the first color doesn't matter too much where you print it as long as it's on the paper and somewhat in the center but the colors after that will because you'll then have to align it which you'll see is really simple I always hate the washing part you obviously have to be quick when washing the ink out so it doesn't dry onto your screen Printing itself doesn't take long, but it's the constant washing and drying that makes it super labor intensive. This is how the blue turned out, and now we'll make the next color, which is pink. I added some fluorescent pink, a bit of red, a bit of white, and a lot of gel medium, and some water to thin it up. The reason why I don't like it thick is because the ink has a higher chance of drying out on your screen, blocking all the holes, so then you can't print anymore until you wash your screen again, which is really annoying. So for this, I had to print the pink onto the acetate, which is securely taped down onto the screen bed. And then with every print that has the blue image on it, I would align it under the pink, turn away the acetate, and then lower the screen and then print it. Then I washed the pink off and here's how the pink turned out on top of the blue. Because the pink has a gel medium which makes it translucent, you can see how the pink and blue overlapped and it becomes this nice purple. My next color, which I want it to be super translucent, is yellow. Here's a test that I do to make sure the color is see-through enough. So here's the pink that I printed on newsprint and I take some yellow with my finger and just dab it and smudge it around the pink and you can see how the yellow that's on the newsprint is a totally different color than the yellow that's on the pink which is kind of a salmon color. I tape the screen again, put the ink on it. Get my squeegee and this is when i started to realize why the side that's closer to the metal edge of the screen isn't really printing properly and that's because i'm printing too close to the screen because i put two images onto one screen i didn't really leave myself enough room 
and you'll see how I try to fix this when I'm printing my final black layer. So here's more of the boring washing out the ink process. Here is how the prints are turning out. The translucent yellow on top of the blue makes this nice earthy green and the yellow on top of the pink makes this orange. Okay, so for the black, I just used the black ink and a lot of water because the black lines are so fine, I didn't want to risk it drying out. So I pull the ink through and you can see how the left side didn't print, the heart isn't connected because it's so close to the edge. So I flood it and print it again with full force holding onto the left side of the squeegee and thank god the heart did connect. So I just need to print the left side of the image harder. And I align every print under the acetate. The screen bed is so heavy, it kind of hurts my head when I'm holding it up. Um, I think washing out the black is actually pretty satisfying. Anyways, look how they turned out! I know it's not perfect, but I did learn from this, and I hope you guys don't have to make my mistakes. I'm so really happy with how the opacities turned out, so I get these nice mixes like the orange, green, and the brown bits at the bottom. I never thought that silkscreen printing had to look perfect because otherwise I could just print out my digital image and it'll be perfect. But this isn't really about that, I think. I like the process and I like feeling the paints and seeing how the colors look when layered on top. It's really special and it's something that digital art won't give you. So yeah, there are little imperfections with this print, but I think that gives it a lot of character and humanity and charm to it. I hope you guys take something away from this, and I'll see you next time!